Hi, I'm Lowell Joseph Gallen, and I am here with our guest for today's interview, Aloma Halter. Aloma, thanks for being a guest on our show. Thank you. Aloma is an artist. She paints watercolors primarily. Yes. And we're going to be talking about, we're here in Jerusalem, in the, in the historic German colony, and we're going to be talking about Aloma's paintings. And what would you like to tell us about your paintings, Aloma? Let's well, start with one of them. First of all, thank you for having well, me on your show. Um, I paint commissions of people's homes. People commission me to paint their home. And I'll show you some examples. So you paint on commission. You don't just paint. People ask you to paint specific subjects. That's, that's true. I paint and I also paint on commission. But increasingly it's become on commission. For example, this beautiful house in Yemin Moshe, Jerusalem's... Um, you mean Moshe area, which is near the Montefiore windmill overlooking the old city walls. This lovely house was commissioned by people in the, lady, in the office of the director of the Cinematheque who asked me to paint her house and they wanted to give it to her for a special birthday. And then this was a commission by somebody who wanted me to paint the King David Hotel, which is here. Quite. This might be down. That's okay. Um, That's Aloma's dog guarding the house. Okay. Um, the, the King David Hotel, which is quite a boring building, so I livened it up by painting it through the arch of the YMCA to give it some perspective, and that was another commission for someone. I just add a note here. In the early 1930s, a famous, what was his name, Schick? A famous architect was commissioned during the British Mandate period to uh, build the King David Hotel, the YMCA. I think he also designed the Scottish Church and some buildings on Prophet Street. That's what Aloma is referring to. So when she says looking through the arch of the YMCA, it's directly across the street from the King David Hotel on King David Street, where the President of the United States will soon be staying when he comes to visit us during Passover in just a few weeks. Yeah, thank you. Um, then this is outside of Jerusalem. It was a commission to paint a house in, in Zichon Yaakov, which is on north between here and Haifa a very beautiful little town, a modern house here, and they just moved in, they wanted me to paint their house. We'll just hold it up a little bit, move it into the center, and good. They wanted me to paint their house. So um, you've, you've been getting a, a lot of commissions from people to paint their homes. That's right. Their homes, their balconies. This was a commission by three grown-up children to paint their parents' beloved balcony because it was their parents' 50th wedding anniversary. Wow, that's really it nice. Was, yeah, lovely. A lovely lot of architecture bit. in your paintings. Uh, there is. I did study architecture. Oh. And my father's an architect. Mm. Yeah. Um, then sometimes I revisit the same view and it comes out totally different. Let's see where this one is. Um, yeah, I do have this thing about the YMCA buildings. I really love them. This is a YMCA by the Sea of Gallery in Tiberias. That's the entrance. And recently I went back and I repainted it and it just came out totally different. The same, the same scene, the same spot, sitting in the same place. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I, I only paint from in front of the building. I never take photos and go home and... I, I have to paint there. So whatever is there at the time, which is not only the building, but my mood. It's the interaction between me and the building. All of these paintings are painted on location. On location. Not from photos. No. And if I don't finish, and I usually don't finish in one sitting, I come back at the same time of day, because the light in, in Jerusalem, in Israel, is very influential. The light is very strong, and the light makes a big impact. So I come back, say I start between 6 and 8 in the morning, one day I will come back between 6 and 8 in the morning on subsequent days until it's finished. And, and usually paintings are between 3 and 4 sittings. Not you mean you'll go back to the yes. same location 3 or 4 three times, or four times yes. to complete yeah. the painting? I also, see many of the commissions are a secret. So I had to paint this building before somebody would emerge from it and see somebody painting it. So between 6 and 8 was safe. It was a surprise birthday present. I see what you mean. So, they might open their front door any time from 8 o'clock in the morning onwards. So I have to be there early. Mm -hmm. 
And the same, oh, the, the balcony, I had to paint with the people's consent, but it was a surprise. Mm -hmm. So how I got around that was by telling them that I'm making a balcony project. I'm choosing beautiful balconies in Jerusalem, which, as you know, there's no dearth of them. Right. And I told them that, yes, their balcony was one, going to be one of the choices. So in addition to being an artist, you also have to be an intelligence operative, because you want to tell people <coughs> the truth. Yes. But you have to be selective in what truths you tell them so that a birthday or anniversary or bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah or brit milah, whatever present it is, can still be a surprise. Exactly. That requires really the wisdom of Solomon. I, I don't, don't know how I don't handle about the that wisdom myself. Of Solomon, but, but there is a clandestine aspect to it. So how many years have you been painting for? Well, I've always painted, but it's somehow taken on a new dimension in the last, say, since 2009. So we're talking about four years. So you painted and painted, people saw the paintings, people liked the paintings, yes. and that led to paying commissions oh, more, yes. and more, more and more from I, families yeah. for their homes. Uh, any offices in this? Is yes, there's an office, an insurance office on Emma Kufaim. I don't, I don't have the photocopy here, and even an insure, in an office. In a beautiful building, they're very happy with their building. It's on the corner of Jerusalem's Emma Kufaim and Lloyd George. Um, it's a lovely building. This is what my father said. He's a retired attorney, 92.5 going on 17. He said, if you love what you do, he's a retired lawyer. If you love what you do and you do it well, the pain work will come. Just do the work and the pain work will come. And I can see you certainly even, love doing even, these paintings. Even outside Israel. This is a commission for the south of France. Really? Yes. You had to go there to this? You did this? Well, I know these people. Yeah. But they did ask me to paint their house. So wow. They converted a French... South of France. Yes, by the Pyrenees. They converted... Romantic. They were converted a farmhouse. Oh, that's yeah. right. How old is the farmhouse? Oh, Are I don't old? really know. I, French buildings, <coughs> I would say maybe 150 to 200 years old. Something like that. Let's take a look at this again. I have a personal memoir I want to mention. This is a farmhouse in the south of France. I was a volunteer on Kibbutz Luchot, and after my final year in college in 1978-1979 in Israel. And uh, there was uh, another student from France on the kibbutz and he said, on your way home to New York, why don't you come and visit my family oh, nice. for two weeks in southern France and I stayed with him and his family in Perigot, which for those of you who speak French, forgive me for murdering your language, I speak New Yorkese, it will never, never leave me. And I was there near the Pyrenees. It's near Bordeaux in Perigot. It was in the springtime in April, so it's very beautiful. So that brings back memories. Oh, that's nice. Well, I did, I did recently have a big exhibition at the YMCA. Yeah, I was, we were there. Good, <laughs> good refreshments, too. Um, and it was only supposed to run for a month. And yeah. it was so successful, they kept extending and extending. In the end, it ran for two and a half months. Really? Yes, yes. Wow. And, and it seemed like every two weeks I would sell another painting. That's wonderful. So at the moment, I have four commissions outstanding that I have to do quite mm -hmm. quickly. Um, Can yeah. we, uh, let's... One is in England and three are in Jerusalem. This was the exhibition at the YMCA. I went there with my wife and... We were looking at Loma's paintings, and we, we know Loma's been painting for years. I didn't realize it was developing into such a successful business. I'm very happy to hear that. <coughs> Any other paintings you want to show in our first well, interview to get our audience warmed up in some of those commissions coming oh, in from yes, around the world? Oh, yes, that would be great. Well, this was very sweet. Um, this, get it in uh, is that good? Uh, what do you think? It's good. Now we're going to make it a little bit better. So <coughs> okay, right. So a lady came to see a previous exhibition before the YMCA and she said, oh, you do buildings, I love it. My husband has a 70th birthday coming up in six months. She's, she plans ahead. Could you paint our house? And the challenge here was to make a not very architecturally stimulating house exciting. How do you do that? Well, I picked up the color of the trees and I noticed that it was somehow echoed in their blinds. I gave more detail to the top floor because they live on the top floor. Mm -hmm. um, this really re required quite a lot of thought how I'd make it more interesting. I mean, it has got a lovely balcony, but that's not their balcony. So you took the color of the surrounding trees 
and blended it with the light reflected on the building to uh, create a color-coded building, which well, architecturally wasn't so interesting, but the light makes it interesting. Well, it had to be more or less true to the building. They had to be able to recognize their building. Right. So I couldn't go too far in my imagination, but just a little bit. Do you do an addition of watercolors to work in oh, oil yes. or acrylic or no, charcoal at, pencil? At the I like to make cartoons. I use a rapidograph. <laughs> that, that's what architects used to use 30 really? years ago, rapidograph, yes. Well, I'm still using it. Oh, no, but it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Now, this was a commission in, in London, in Hendon. In you, England's green and pleasant land. Do you know Hendon? Yes. yes. I was in London for uh, two weeks in 1992 on the way to Israel, and I stayed in Golders Green, right. which is on the train line exactly. before after Hendon. Before Hendon, on the northern line. Yeah. So this, they had this lovely house, and there's quite an amusing mm. anecdote about doing this house. Mm. So I was sitting opposite, which was across the road, on the grass of a block of apartments, quietly minding my own business, painting their house. And around me, I kind of noticed, but didn't really notice, a whole bunch of Italian workers, because England's full of e, you know, European Union workers, were laying the turf all around me. And then at one point they asked me to move because they wanted to turf water where I was sitting. And then it was the end of you know, four or five in the afternoon. I almost finished and suddenly I hear, Pshhh, and I realize with horror that they're watering the turf after laying it. I sort of jumped up. Got my, got my pad, just managed to save it, and the watercolours and everything scattered. It was a really close call. Did they ruin your painting? No, they didn't. But they were very un... Um, well, they, were, they said sorry, but I didn't sound like you really, really meant it. Well, maybe because they didn't mean it, but at least they said anything. They said that's it. already something, yes. especially these days. Yeah, I know. So that, that's a little taste of the paintings. So, well, that's wonderful. And what happens is people contact me and they say, look, our house is in such and such a place. Do you think you can paint it? And what I do is I just go over, I have a look at it. I see what the conditions are. If it's on the street, if I have to sit, you know, between traffic to do it. If I, you know, what's the light like? How's, you know, if there's any shade, shadows. You know, I kind of look and then I estimate how many sittings it will be. And um, price it accordingly. Well, wow, that's really exciting. So, thank you very much for this first interview, and we thank our viewers for watching. You've just met one of the many local artists. Local. Uh, everything is local these days. Throughout Israel, I hope to be doing many more interviews with artists around the country. And I hope some of you will be contacting Aloma for commissions for your surprise birthday parties for your parents and your kids or each other. Anniversaries anniversaries, and Aloma works on location. So she's ready to come over to Mongolia to Ulaanbaatar <laughs> for the commission there of your yurt uh, for that special anniversary or grandpa and grandma's uh, golden or 200th anniversary. They live long in those places. <laughs> Thanks Aloma for thank the you. interview and thank you everyone for watching. Thank you.